This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Our goal with our videos is to empower you to be able to do the repairs on your own and save a whole lot of money and also get that great feeling of having fixed it by yourself. So during spin, we got that, that sound, but no movement of the spin basket. And that means that this thing, the motor coupler has broken and it's pretty easy to replace. We got the machine unplugged and then leaning back, here's the part number. You can get this from Amazon. And we're gonna climb <clears throat> underneath here and take out the motor and then take out the motor coupler. It should only take about 20 minutes. So we're underneath the machine. We got uh, leaning back so we can get good access and it might be good to support it too, to make sure it won't fall on you. We're gonna take this thing off first, which is the uh, water pump. And there's a clip here that we have to take off and just gotta, pull back on this thing, <clears throat> it's called a spring clip because it's just kind of spring tension. It comes off and we're gonna go ahead and twist that thing so it can pull out. We got the same thing on the top of the water pump, so it's a little bit higher. All right, so we got that thing loosened up and now what we can do is just grab the water pump and kind of wiggle it, pull it away. What I like to do at this point, to get this water pump out of the way, I like to just pull it back here and tuck it underneath this um, support beam, just so it's not gonna be in my way during the procedure. And the next thing is to take off the electrical connector right here. Pretty easy to get off. It just has a little cap here at the top. Thumb to so that takes off the power to the motor. Yeah, here at the top, this white wire hooks up to a spade connector. And we're just going to pull back on that spade connector that came off. So we got that off. And that's out of the way. So the next thing to get the motor off is we have to take out a couple of... Um, I think they're quarter inch screws, these little guys right here. One here and there's one at the top. Right here is the motor coupler. Let's see if I can turn it with my thumb. So we're just gonna be replacing that thing today. We just gotta get the motor off to get to it. So we took off two of these little quarter inch screws. One of them was right there. And then there's one at the top, same thing. And now what we want to do is pry off this spring clip and then the one on the top too. So this thing came off and now I'm going to twist it here at the bottom. It's going to allow me to take this thing out of here so it's not in my way anymore. So that just came out. So if you want to put it back in, it goes in this hole and then you twist it and it locks it. <clears throat> So now the only thing holding the motor in is this one at the top. We're gonna to use the same technique using the standard head screwdriver to, to pop that out. So we get the screwdriver underneath there and kind of twist it, just came loose. All right, now the motor's kind of heavy, so I'm gonna use two hands. I'm gonna pull it off of this plate right here and the motor coupler. So we're gonna Pull it <clears throat> toward the front of the washing machine. I'm going to grab it, pull it, support it with two hands, and there is our washing machine motor. Get it out of the way. And then right here, we can see our broken motor coupler. This plastic piece broke. <clears throat> so, what we got to do now is just pull this thing out, the old one. <clears throat> the new ones are kind of, they're better. They have uh, some metal built into it. 
slightly better. The reason these break is uh, old age or when the washing machine is asked to wash something very heavy like a blanket <clears throat> then um, or bathroom mats it's apt to break. To get this one off what I'm going to do is come underneath here standard head screwdriver underneath and then I'm just going to pry the thing off. There we go. So it's coming off. That is off. And now we're ready to install the new one. It's a washing machine motor. One side has a long shaft and one side has a short shaft. That's the side we want to use. These little rubber things are supposed to be attached <coughs> to the motor. You may find that one or two of them have still attached to that black plate. If that's the case, you can just pull it off the plate and put it back on the motor. Easy to do. So this has kind of a shape to it, right? And then this shaft has the same shape. <clears throat> so you have to line up <clears throat> that shape. And then you can see it doesn't sit all the way flat. So we want to get that thing pounded down flat. I'm going to use something like this. You can use a socket, works pretty good too. Put there, and then we're going to tap it with the hammer, but we got to make sure we don't hit these plastic parts. Okay. So that's good. It's now nice and flush. I just use this thing because it's big enough to fit over that shaft. We're going to do the same thing with this one, but it's going to go <clears throat> on the transmission shaft and this rubber piece is going to fit right over these little prongs like that. When you do this, what I'd like you to do, if you see these three holes, this one, these empty holes, try to put um, this one at the 12 o'clock position. This is facing the top of the motor. The bottom of the motor is where this paper thing is just to point toward the top and these two are going to point out toward the corners okay so we're going to do the same thing now with this one up there on the <clears throat> transmission shaft so there's the same kind of shaft huh this we saw in the motor here's the part of the motor coupler we're going to fit that over that shaft and we'll have to hammer that thing down as we did on the other piece, <clears throat> once we get it kind of in position. All right, so we got that in there pretty good. We're gonna turn these forks a little bit different from the motor one. We're gonna put the, gonna put um, this one at the 12 o'clock position at the top, to fit into that hollow part on the, on the rubber piece, and these two down at the corners. And then we're gonna put the motor back on and these you can think of as the male part is going to fit into this rubber piece on the motor. And this is, you could think of as the orientation, right? The uh, female part. So this is the opening that that prong is going to go into. And then these two lower ones, the other prongs will go into. I think this is the only kind of tricky part of this whole procedure. It takes a little trying, uh, and the motor's kind of heavy, so you have to support it with one hand and guide it with the other hand. So I'm going to place the camera over here. Hopefully you can kind of see what it's, what it's doing. All right, so we got the motor. I'm going to hold it in my right hand. into position, guide it onto the, under that shaft. Yeah, just sat, just sat down on there, that's good. Cool, so I'm still holding up the motor. And what I wanna do now is take 
this piece, that's the upper strap. I'm gonna push it into that hole and then I'm gonna turn it so that the back part's locked in and then I'm gonna push the top over. So what we did is we got the front strap hooked back up. There's the front of it. The back of it goes back in there. So I, turn, I put it in then I turned it 90 degrees to lock in the back. I slipped it over the front. That's holding up the motor right now. <clears throat> so we're gonna do the same thing with the bottom one. This might give you a better feel of what's going on because I can show you this one. All right, so I got this hole right here. I'm gonna put this thing in, the strap, slip it in there. And then once I got it in, I'm gonna turn it 90 degrees. You have to kind of wiggle it, there it goes. Now I'm gonna push it up over this thing until it locks. So I'm gonna <clears throat> push up with two thumbs until it locks. All right, that just locked in. All right, so we got that one locked in, motor's in position. I got two connections. One is, spade connector so we can show it to you guys right there and that's where that white wire goes <clears throat> okay just got that one on that one's in okay now we're going to put on this modular connector this thing goes on over a bunch of terminals. Make sure it seats all the way down. And then you wanna push this down so this locks it in. All right, got it. Okay. The reason it can still drain is the motor can still work. This thing spins, that powers up the drain the shaft that goes that goes back into the transmission that connection was broken so it can't move the agitator it can't it can't move the spin basket but it will <coughs> do the drain so these little screws are going to go back in we're going to tighten those up those are quarter inch screws one there and one at the top okay there's the bottom one I'll tighten up this tool Got it. Okay. So this is the this is the female part here. We go over that shaft, and we have to make sure that that shape of the shaft will fit into that shape of the water pump. And one way you can do that is you can come down here. You can turn this thing by hand until the shaft lines up, it's lined up. So, you got the water pump on. You can put these legs, there's four of these legs all the way down against the motor. And then I'm gonna put these clips back in. <clears throat> there's a little hole for the bottom one right there. Same kind of thing where you put it in and you twist it 90 degrees. And then, it's going to slip up over the water pump and hold it by spring tension. The bottom one's done. We're going to do the same on the top. It's just kind of hard to see what I'm doing, so I'll do that and show you guys. Once you get the machine back in place, it's good to grab it by the back and lift it up about six inches a couple of times, and that helps it to kind of reset the back feet. So now with the new motor coupler, it's back to agitating correctly again and spinning again and just working great. So these are really good machines, should last you a long, long time. Just try to avoid washing heavy things like blankets and bathroom mats and comforters and should be fine. So thanks so much for watching. Hope this helps you to fix your Whirlpool washer. And please subscribe when you get a chance so we can send you some more videos on how to fix appliances. Thanks again.